Zen Soul, first, thank you so much for doing this interview with me. Right off the top, I got to say, I love your vibe. I love your voice. And I'm not even talking thank about you. your your singing voice. I love your speaking voice. It is yeah. so <laughs> I, it is so eloquent and so soft. You have the kind of voice where I would love. You know how when people have trouble sleeping, you <laughs> would read like poetry or pats, passages or whatever, and you could probably make somebody so comfortable that they would have the best sleep in the world. That is so funny. Thank you. I actually did like this, this guided meditation series with um, OPFs. Yeah, director <laughs> X. Yeah. So that's one of the reasons why, because people always said that. So I'm like, okay, this is perfect collaboration. I love, and I didn't know just for folks who are watching this on Rudy Blair Entertainment Media, RudyBlairMedia.com. I did not know this at all. <laughs> But great vibe. Where are you right now? Because honestly, you are like, what are you playing in Calgary? You're playing, you're playing everywhere. Um, right now, I'm actually in Toronto. I'm, I'm, I'm in Vaughn, to be exact. Okay, fantastic. Do you have any shows coming? Oh, no, no. Let me ask you that at, towards the end. I want to jump <laughs> in too much on that. But hopefully you're going to have a great long weekend. But, um, you know, right off the top, congratulations. First up with RBCX Music. You're a part of Thank this alumnus. Um, how does it feel being part of this great group of people who I've been mm -hmm. having the pleasure of interviewing these folks who have made it into this in RBCX music? And to me, it's like you're all the next big stars in representing Canadian music. And it's an amazing thing with all genres. How does it feel being part of this? It feels really good. Like... Um, I got to meet everybody recently because we had like a summit. So recently I got to meet everyone and it was just so nice to meet everyone and be a part of this program and see like everybody's journey and how different it is. And but yet how we have like similar experiences at the same time, because in an artist world, we have very similar experiences, but different journeys. Um, so it was just nice to meet everyone and to meet the people that have been like working to bring this all together and to see how passionate they are and how much they actually truly care about each and every single one of us. And the fact that they have to know each and every single one of us, like it's just it's just so like fulfilling and it just feels nice to feel appreciated, you know? For folks who don't know what first up with RBCX Music is, what is it exactly? And how did you find out about it to get involved? So it's a program that like supports um, up and coming artists in Canada as a whole. So not just Toronto, but like everywhere in Canada, they provide funding, they provide performance opportunities, they provide like opportunities like this where I can get interviews, you know, and get more exposures. <laughs> And yeah, they'll also allow for like connections with other um, industry people, you know? And I got, I got started because I used to see online like people that were other artists that I know were part of the program. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what is this program that everybody is just part of? Like, I wanna be part of this program. So then um, I saw about it and I'm like, okay. Um, I applied, I applied like two times and this was like my third time. I finally got it. <laughs> so, yeah. What has it done for you? I mean, you mentioned about, you know, doing interviews like this, but is there something in particular that if you did not be part of this, it, something would never have happened? A lot of performance opportunities, like corporate performance opportunities that I can now use to get other opportunities later on because now I've been put in that space. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like a lot of opportunities like that that I wasn't able to get on my own, I've now had my foot in. So it's done that. And I would say that is one of the biggest things that I have taken from this so far, all the opportunities that have been coming. And those opportunities in turn are helping me to fund my music because not only do we get the performance opportunities, but we get paid to perform and do the things we love. And it's been helping to allow me to continue doing the things I love. <laughs> I love that. Um, let, let's also yeah. talk about your amazing career too, because um, right off the top, uh, you're part of the Canadian melting pot. Originally, where are you from? 
Nigeria. <laughs> What's Nigeria like? Ah, uh, Nigeria is very cultured. <laughs> That's what I would say. Um, it's very, it's very cultured. Like it, it's beautiful. Mm. Um, we have a lot of work to do. I will never deny that we have a lot of work to do. And when we when we finally get to that place, it's 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 going to be beautiful because there's so much talent. There's so much brains. There's like so much in Nigeria and it's just filled with so much color mm -hmm. and so much like beauty. And yeah, I can't I can't wait for Nigeria to show its true colors because we even it. see it already in the music. We already see see the beauty that can come out of Nigeria with the music. So just imagine when everything else is, is, you know, is formed and put in the right places. Now, I know you never ask a woman her age, but may I ask how old you were when you came to Canada? <laughs> I came when I was seven. Seven years old. So this, yeah. the re, the, I, I'm sort of setting you up on this. So we're talking about a beautiful, yeah. warm, hot country what was it like to come to Canada and experience the first time that thing that you hear about called snow? Honestly, I'm not going to lie to you. I don't remember my experience because when you move, I heard when you move a lot as a child, um, you have really poor memory of things. That's true. So I moved a lot when I was growing up. So I don't really recall the, um, my first experiences of a lot of things, but I can tell you even till today, I still cannot, still cannot stand the snow, still cannot stand the cold. And even in the summertime, everywhere you go, the AC is blasting. <laughs> like, can I enjoy the little summertime that I have? The little <laughs> The, the, I'm curious though, and I don't know if you've experienced this yet with your travels, because as I said, you travel around the country and and perform or whatever. Do you travel around when it's in the winter? Because um, you know the Toronto cold is very different from Calgary snow, uh, cold or Winnipeg cold. Or I haven't experienced that yet, and mm -hmm. I am scared. Let me tell you, I am scared to experience the other cold because. I went to Calgary like in June and this and June was it June yeah in June our weather was good. Yeah. I went over there and it was like spring. I didn't bring like a a, a light jacket cuz I didn't think I needed to, but I I really needed to. I, yeah, <laughs> I needed yeah. to bring a light jacket. Let, let, let me put you this way, if you get booked to Saskatoon in the winter, <laughs> God help you. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> God help you. Um, oh my the, the, God. You know, I read that um, the love of music really began, or your career re began at 11 years old. What was going on in your life at 11 years old when you were discovering yourself and music that it was the perfect combination? Honestly, I just knew I loved, like, just writing, anything writing. Like, I even would write storybooks when I was, like, younger. I just loved it. I hated reading. Mm -hmm. hated it but I loved writing and I remember um they asked us what we wanted to be when we wanted to grow up and for some reason I think because my father was in like the pharmaceutical company I always wanted to be a pharmacist like that was my dream job when I was younger oh, so wow. I wrote a song I wrote a song about wanting to be a pharmacist <laughs> and like I've been writing music like I know I was writing a song before that song, but that song really made me like, oh, I can write about anything I want. If I can write about being, wanting to be a pharmacist, I can write about anything. And I was writing about love that I wasn't even experiencing. I just had to watch a movie and like take inspiration from like a movie that I watched. So it wasn't about my experiences. It was more about like just experiences I saw around me. Yeah. I'm curious because, and I say this, of course, with uh, utmost respect, you're a beautiful young woman. Was Did anybody try to convince you to model or anything like that? Um. Yeah, I, I used to walk. I used to um, run away. Yeah, I used to walk the runway. Um, I, I can be very annoying with modeling. <laughs> That's why I don't really go into it too much. I Like, I'll be picky. Like, I don't like that picture. No, no, no. And I know with modeling... 
Like once you sign that contract, they get control of which picture they pick. And I don't want to find out which picture they picked with everybody else. <laughs> Well, it makes sense there. And uh, again, didn't know about the modeling. It's I don't know what it is. You and I seem to have a really good connection going on here in in learning about your life. I seem to be picking things up. And I think a lot of people do that. What do you think it is about you, your music, your aura that really connects with other people? Where does that come from? I think because I'm very honest and vulnerable with what I talk about in my music. Like, I don't shy away from things that other people might shy away from saying. Like, some people would be hesitant to talk about how much they want love and all of that because they don't want to seem like, oh, I'm so desperate for love. I don't care. I'm going to say it how I feel in the moment, regardless if it comes off sounding like this, you know? And I just always, I feel like music is used to heal people and to, like, connect with people. And the, the best way to do that is by being honest and by really being vulnerable and showing who you are. And those that feel the same way like you feel will connect. You know, that's an old school thing, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And it's funny because I've been talking to some artists who even now when they put together albums or EPs or whatever, they do the slow jam, which is something that seems to be, at one point, you never heard that anymore. It was just all about, you know, what was going on and, you know, the, uh, you know, looking good here and whatever else. Um, what do you think it is that, uh, how do I put this? When you talk about relationships, what do you think the mistakes that we make or are we um, mistakes that we make in relationships? And even when we're looking for relationships, do we look for something that is impossible? Do we settle? Like, do you understand what I'm trying to say? Um, I don't think we look for something that's impossible. I think we... Um... We sometimes forget that people are individuals mm. and because people are individuals, they are always going to change and it might not be at the same pace. It might not be at the same time. Uh, yes. And we, as we're growing, we expect someone to be growing with us. And if we're not, if we're staying behind, we accept, expect someone to stay behind with us. And like, we're just all at different levels in life at different times. And like timing is really important, but that timing can also change at any time because we're all different individuals. And like to truly be in a relationship, you have to kind of be one. Yes. I, and I, people sorry. have a hard time understanding, people have a hard time understanding that to be one, you've got to compromise and like, you know, I love, I love how you, you put that. I always remember, um, and I can't remember the movie, but it was a movie with Cicely Tyson was in it. And she was talking about her late husband and how, um, uh, as the character, she said she was lying on her husband's chest and she said that she couldn't hear his heartbeat. And he said, yes, you can. It's that your heartbeat and my heartbeat beat the same. And I always yeah. thought that was a beautiful thing. And you kind of said yeah. it the same way with that too um and which again talks about what your music really represents uh when you were you know really getting your career together something happened mm -hmm. to the world and that was covid how yeah. did covid affect your career because s things were really starting to roll for you and then the world changed yeah so things were happening and then boom covid happened and like some opportunities that I was like excited for didn't get to happen because of COVID. But at the same time, a lot of like major artists weren't releasing music anymore mm -hmm. because at that point they can't really tour. And for the labels touring is, and for the artists touring is big. So it allowed like smaller artists like myself to, to get the attention of like the, the audience because now they don't have, I, I'm not competing with major label artists, you know? So now 
I can just pump out the music that I have and people are more willing to listen to me because they're at home anyways. They're not doing anything. And this girl is saying, listen to my music, listen to my music, listen to my music. I might as well listen to her music. So it kind of helped me in a way and it allowed me to slow down because I'm the type of person that's like busy, 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 busy all the time. Like if I'm not doing music, I'm at work. So it allowed me to like slow down because a lot of like, outside music stuff weren't happening as much. I was still going to work full time, but I wasn't outside after work like I was before. I would like just come home and focus on like a release strategy or if I'm doing performances, it will be online, which allowed me to still be at home and like focus on other stuff. So COVID helped in a way, wish we didn't have to go through it, yeah. but it helped. Um, it helped me get myself out there. And now that like everything is opened back up, I'm able to like now perform all the music that I've, I've released. Like now I'm having the opportunities to perform and people are more excited to go outside to shows now because they were locked up. Yeah. So it like, it kind of worked out. You know, you, you talked about work and um, you know, you give back through your music. You do the same thing with uh, the job that you also do, do too. What job is that? Yeah. I work in the at a hospital, so I'm a physio and occupational therapist assistant. <laughs> and here we go, and we're talking about um, COVID, uh, mm -hmm. and of course hospitals. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, what was that like for you? Because here you are, you're trying to get your career going, but you're also helping other people during this tough time, and not knowing when we didn't know what this thing was all about. What was that like for you to deal with that every day? These two important things are going on in your life and it's smack in your face. It was, it was hard because you really do feel the difference in the hospital when like the, the emergency is like packed and when the ICU is full, like you really do feel the difference and it's like all hands on. And like some, some of us even had to work like not do our job but do other jobs in order to like make up for the lack of presence that was in the hospital and like it was it was really difficult i don't want to speak too much on how the hospital was because i don't think i'm allowed to like yeah. Speak. yeah 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 but um it, it was it was really it was really hectic and hard and at times like you felt an appreciated by like the government for example because like the government didn't consider rehab staff um direct what was it that they were using because you know when they were giving like for example the two dollar extra pay to like yes. nurses yes things like that rehab wasn't considered part of that but like example receptionists were but rehab staff are the ones that have to literally be in the face of the patient <laughs> and it's like how are we not considered and we literally have to touch every single one of them like crazy so it, it just you felt unappreciated at times but something like that you gotta do because you love it like not because of what extra pay you'll get or this and that did the experience or these experiences change the way you wrote your music like story-wise <laughs> Or emotionally wise and how you did it? I, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say it, it changed, but it allowed me to see the importance of like music and art during like times like that. Like yeah, we needed it, it really it uplifted people and it showed the importance in that and like not every time sad songs. Sometimes songs that like, you know, just to make people happy. It's not every time you got to be serious with the music. Sometimes you can have fun with music. So let's talk about two great things that did come out of all of this. Uh, one, mm -hmm. uh, certain uh, performance with a certain international artist uh, with the initials SP. <laughs> what was that like? <laughs> It was amazing. Like, honestly, I already knew Sean Paul was a legend. Okay, I knew he was a legend. But sometimes you forget all the bangers that, like, that man released. So at the show, I was just like, and this one, and this one, I forgot this one. Like, 
it was it was honestly a vibe and then when i like i went on stage obviously before and the audience was just so like nice i was so nervous before because i'm like this is a lot of people i've never performed in this amount with in front of this amount of people before i don't know how they're gonna like take me especially because i'm more of a like soulful soft artist and sean paul is like <laughs> you mm. know <laughs> so i'm like well baby like okay we're ready to turn up now <laughs> but they were so kind and they were like some were singing along and it was it was honestly a vibe the energy was right everything was right the promoters did it like very well it went smoothly like i really enjoyed that that day and and another day too did did something also uh happen a certain i don't know nomination with a certain massive canadian uh award thing majig with <laughs> the a j Juno award? that's it i couldn't remember the name of it congratulations <laughs> on that nomination thank you thank you no what exactly was the nomination for our traditional r&b soul rec recording of the year do you remember who you were going up against um charlotte day wilson mm -hmm. savannah ray john vinyl some uh, amazing names emmanuel i yeah. believe emmanuel amazing yeah. names congratulations with that too thank you so thank many great you. things so when you have all of this great vibe going on does that mean that vibe translates to new music do we have a new single out right now as we speak i've been releasing a lot of afro soul vibes mm -hmm. lately um what do we have so out right I'm now actually, as we speak right now it's a song called together it's an afro soul song called together it has like I'm a piano um, and R&B vibes to it. It's like my spin on I'm a piano. I actually have a, a EP, an Afro Soul EP coming out this month. And like those are the singles leading up to the EP. Yeah, so I'm excited for that EP to to release. I wanted something fun for the summer. And maybe COVID is why, what made me want to do something fun instead of serious. Like maybe just seeing how much we needed that energy. Um, but I just wanted to release Afro Soul before I go back into my serious, serious R&B again. And we love it, absolutely love it. Uh, and as I was gonna ask you in the beginning of this interview, I'm gonna ask you in the end, shows. What are we looking at for shows? I have a lot of shows coming up. I have the waterfront. <laughs> I have the waterfront festival coming up. I, I'm perform I'm opening for Mario in Calgary. Uh, That's coming up. Um, I have a Haunt Fest. It's gonna be in November. Um, I have another festival, Camp Walden, with some amazing artists that I'm excited. Like there's some artists that I like absolutely love in this city that I'm excited to meet and like maybe collab with one day. So they will be at that um, festival that I'm performing at. So I'm excited to meet them. Um, Oh, I'm also performing at TIFF. I was going to ask that. I was reading some stuff, but I couldn't see where it was actually confirmed. What's going on with you and TIFF? So I'm performing. I don't remember exactly what, what um, the stage is called. I'm so sad. I don't remember the name of the stage. But I will be performing at TIFF on the 9th. I believe on the 9th okay. of September. Yeah. Okay. I I know the stage because what they do is they love to bring artists like yourself out there. Is it's outside, correct? Yes, it's outside. It's outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they've been doing this for years. It's great that they're bringing this back. I can't remember off the top of my head too, but that is so great. So at least we get you before you everybody else grabs you. So I love that, <laughs> and I will be at TIFF. So I'm going to try to see if I can pass by uh, your show. So yes, looking forward yes. to it. Congratulations with all this success. And um, it just you. shows that when you have that that beautiful vibe that you have too, no matter what craziness is coming at you, you cut right through it and you keep going, walking down that golden road. Much deserved, much appreciated. Thank Congrats you. on first up Thank with RBCX you. Music, and uh, looking forward to talking to you in the future with all the other great things that are going to be happening to you. Thank you so much Thank for the interview. You. Thank you for having me. You're such a vibe and your energy and all the questions you ask, you're reading right through me. Uh. <laughs>